Marigolds are one of those plants that everyone likes to put in their garden and it's been carried on as an old wise tale for ages. But are marigolds worth putting in your garden? What have they scientifically been proven to give us a benefit for, if anything at all? Marigolds are one of those plants that are incredibly easy to start from seed or buy from the store and keep along alive under nearly any condition. This can include drought to relatively moist soil, shade all the way to the sunniest of spots in your yard. I have a list of what the internet told me that marigolds are capable of doing in your garden and I have to read it all out to you. So they're able to scare off rabbits and deer, a repellent for slugs and snails, have the ability to suppress weeds, treat harmful nematodes in your soil, bring pollinators into the garden, and even be a pest repellent. So how many of these points are actually accurate? So one thing I will say is that there's over 50 species of marigolds, and that means that the results or the benefits from these could vary depending on the species you have. But one thing marigolds all have in common is they originated in South America. So you've heard of the French marigold, you've heard of the African marigold. These are just cultivars of the South American variety, which is where marigolds originate from and nowhere else. So when it comes to marigolds and rabbits, this is very easily debunked and completely not true. I know this personally because my rabbit will actually eat marigolds, no questions asked. So that one is just debunked because I tried it in my own backyard. So when it comes to pest repellent, this has been completely debunked as not true, unless of course you're using it as a trap crop. So I've done a video on trap cropping before, but what a marigold can be used for in regards to trap cropping includes aphids, Japanese beetles, snails, spider mites, potato leaf hoppers, stock boards, and it comes to a total of 15 different bugs. Now trap crop simply means we're going to plant the marigolds to attract the bugs in, and once those plants are infested as the preferred type of food source for these pests. You can then remove those marigolds either via composting, you can trash and burn them, you can spray them with pesticide, whatever the case is. So that's how trap cropping would work in this case when it comes to marigolds. However, some research out of California has shown that marigolds are great at controlling nematodes. Very specifically, not root, not nematodes, which actually resulted in better uh, tomato yields, yields. And the reason for this is because the rhizosphere or the exudates released into the rhizosphere of the plant. And what this means in really just short fancy terms is that the roots have an area in the soil and wherever the roots touch is the rhizosphere of that environment. So inside that rhizosphere, marigolds actually released a toxin that killed or inhibited the hatching of nematodes. This ultimately affected the life cycle of the nematodes, increasing both the health of the plant and the overall yield of that plant as well, in this case, tomatoes. So the way to use marigolds to control this really specific nematode species, if you're having issues with it, would be to plant Plant the marigolds as a cover crop and then directly plant your tomatoes into that space approximately within two months. However, if you were to just plant marigolds around the area and not in the space in which the tomatoes are planted, so in the case of like an intercrop or a companion crop situation, technically speaking, you don't see the same results because it has to be very specifically in the rhizosphere of the marigold. So do keep that in mind if you're gonna use this to fight against a nematode problem. Okay, so this next tip is really specific. Um, cannabis people will know who I'm, what I'm talking about here. Anyone who's into just uh, oils and smells of plants will also know what I'm talking about here. But we all know marigolds have a very specific scent. And this is called by terpenes. So these terpenes essentially release a smell and this smell itself can act as a deterrent. And one study did show some results in actually uh, deterring white flies. Definitely something you could try. The study was a one and done. There wasn't uh, follow-up studies done or any peer reviewing of it. However, I mean, be your own garden scientist. That's what the point of this channel is. And if you're thinking to yourself, I have a white fly problem, I need a solution, try Miracles as a biological control. Where they did fail entirely is actually cabbage moss. That's like a really common use marigolds to deter cabbage moss. That one's just totally faked. It's been 
debunked by science many times over. So that is just a complete old wise tale. Now the next one is pollinators. Now, yes, of course, marigolds attract pollinators. So there's no question there. However, they actually attract a very specific pollinator, syrophid, syrophid, syrophid flies. I'm so sorry, I'm tired right now. But those flies actually are predatory to harmful pests. So they're considered a beneficial pest that actually eats problem pests in your garden. So because marigolds attract those pollinators into the space, those pollinators then will go and consume your pest, uh, things like aphids, for example, that are attacking your garden. So definitely something to think about there. One of my videos I did about, uh, I believe it was companion or trap cropping and attracting ladybugs into the environment. I can do like a ladybug specific flower slash plant video, but if you have an aphid problem, do marigolds because if you have these flies in your area, then it will definitely help uh, take them out. Now, the last thing is actually weed suppression. And this is true. Marigolds are very aggressive in growing when they're allowed to establish. And because of their really blanketing uh, technique, they are able to suppress weeds solely because of ground cover. So if we were to use any sort of ground cover that was rapidly growing and able to snuff out light or compete for both water and nutrients that is comparable to marigold, that would suffice in this case. So for example, if you had a wave petunia that is incredibly aggressive in sprawling out, that is a weed suppressant. Even like oregano or mint, anything that's aggressive and coating and blanketing of your soil surface technically is a weed suppressant. It's not a weed suppressant because of any sort of chemical release or specific attributes within the soil system um, that that plant is suppressing or encouraging. It is solely because of ground cover and marigolds are really great for that. So. That is your crash course in marigolds and how you can use them in your garden and what actually is just a make-believe myth. I hope you guys enjoyed and I will talk to you next time. Bye.